Hey everybody, just doing a quick video for you on MyFitnessPal and how to set it up properly. Here we have, I'm gonna go to my home page, and I'm going to show you at your home page, you're going to see lots of different tabs here. We've got your food, exercise, different reports. Um, I always recommend people set up on their laptop, but the app, if you download that, that's very good. Um, to have on your phone. It helps to make it really convenient to track your food. I sit down at night and track my nutrition um, regularly. I try to pre-log certain things and then, you know, double check that I haven't had any particular snacks or um, make sure I update my water and my exercise um, later. So I do that on my phone when I'm just sitting down relaxing and it doesn't take, you know, but just a few minutes. This blog on my fitness file has fantastic recipes. I highly recommend you check this out, the blog button. Okay, so if we look where I'm at today, I have 522 calories remaining, and I've already kind of tracked everything that's going on for me. But what I want you to look at is, take a quick look at your goals, okay? So here's my normal goal day. So I'm at about 1,800 calories. Everybody's gonna be different here. Um, that's on an active day for me. Um, if I'm not active that day, I usually bump mine down to 16, 14 to 1600 calories. But right here is where you could edit your fat, carbs, and protein. And that's important because sometimes, um, especially next month, we'll be looking at doing some cycling for carb cycling. And daily, you might go food, goals, that'll get you here, and we might adjust these numbers, okay? So we might raise or lower your percentages. When you do that, you want it all to equal 100%. Once you make those adjustments, this will turn green here and you can save your changes. Okay, so that's under the food and goals. Now under food and settings is where, so I did food settings, is where we wanna make sure you're tracking carbs, fats, and proteins. That's a default when you set up MyFitnessPal. Wanna make sure you add your fibers and your sugars because when we pay attention to carbohydrates, all of the foods with carbs in them, they have fiber and sugar in them. And we want more fiber and less sugar in our carbs, okay? So all food is only carb, fat, protein. Fiber and sugar are substrates of carbs. They're, they're like a subcategory of a carbohydrate. The other thing that you can adjust here is it defaults when you put up my fitness pal, it defaults to breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Here we have pre-workout snack and post-workout snack, and I like that you add those there so that we have them available. This is also where you can do your diary sharing, okay? And mine is, um, I have mine locked with a key because I don't want people eating necessarily exactly like mine. I don't want people to necessarily see my food diary. Um, but if you want me to see yours, you need to have that open. You know, you can make it open to friends only or whatever. I don't check food diaries for people for free. Um, it it's, takes a lot of time to go through all of that. Um, so we can always set up a nutrition um, session if that's something that you have an interest in doing. Um, during class time or during training time, if you want to pull up your fitness pal during a paid session, that's no problem either. I just find it doesn't work well when I'm spending hours looking at people's food logs um, unless they're actually vested in it. So moving on, um, we've got our food, going back to the food tab. I just want to give you a quick visual of, you know, this is my pre-tracked food for today. So I've got in the morning, I like to do um, a spark with some muscle gain, and I notice I do a half serving there. Because then when I have my Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwich here, which isn't something I always eat, it is a processed food, but it's a quick thing that helps keep me on task. Um, it has a decent amount of carbs, not too many. Um, I like to hit around 30 something, you know, 30 to 40 on carbs per meal. And then my protein, it gets me to 30 because I've got 17 in the sandwich and 13 here. And then the sandwich has eight grams of fat because when we eat fat free, we never feel full, okay? The only thing bad about this one, and not bad, but the only thing lacking is, in my opinion, is fiber. I'd like to see somewhere between five and 10 grams here. So just some guidelines there for meals. Um, for most women, somewhere between three and 400 calories eaten every few hours is ideal. Looking at lunch, we've got Chicken Devon. Um, this is from an allrecipes.com, and I'll show you how to import a recipe here in a moment. So it was really super easy for me to get these things tracked because I looked up the recipe and pulled them in, 
and um, I'll show you that, like I said, in just a sec. Let's go through this part first. But it's super, super easy, and it's a lot easier than trying to type in your own stuff. So, once again, remember I said around three to 400 calories is pretty decent. So I did a salad and some um, ranch dressing here. My fats are a little bit higher here on this meal, but I need a little more fat because, remember, I'm, I'm doing a little bit lower carbs. So, um, looking at dinner, another one that I imported, um, that's the one that's a little bit higher, like I said, in, um, in calories, but it's not particularly crazy, right? Um, cause we're not thinking of, you know, staying under four, you know, 30 calories is not that big of a deal, especially when we're exercising. So here's some snack ideas here. Notice I have some raspberries. All berries are higher in fiber. Look, eight grams of fiber. Awesome. Uh, some peanuts. Because once again, we're doing a little higher fat, a little lower carb. These turkey bites and cheddar bites, once again, a little higher fat, a little lower carb. So just some little snack ideas, some combos that you can do. I also like raspberries for like when you get home from work and you feel like you want to eat the house down. It makes it easy to get something healthy inside you that's got some fiber. Also make sure you're doing a pre-workout snack and a post-workout um, snack. So we want that nutrition surrounding your workouts. This is a good quick 100 calorie, doesn't make you feel too full kind of pre-workout. And then the post-workouts are ready to drink, so are really nice, they're super convenient. So this is putting me at around 1,700 calories. Carbs, fat, proteins are looking pretty good. Notice my fiber is a little higher, so I'm over on fiber, which is a good thing. And so that would be a pre-track day. Now, let's take a look real quick at what it looks like to do um, and import for a recipe. So, recipe idea. What I did here, I did a search. I think you should do this every single week, guys. Find a new recipe. This is what keeps, your, keeps you on track. New recipes, new snack ideas. I just Googled chili recipes. Found this one that said easy. I like easy. Look, simple ingredients. Probably have these stocked in your um, pantry already. Could switch this to lean ground turkey if you wanted, but Watch this. I copy. I don't want to change any of this. I want because it's got all the numbers, all the stats are there. So under food recipes, watch this. You just paste it and then hit import. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it right here. So take a look. If you look at the easy chili recipe, look, it even imported the picture. How nice is that? So all I did was hit log it and you can pick what date. So what if I made chili and I said, that's gonna be my lunch for the week. So I could actually log this for every single day for the next week, pretty easily right from here. How sweet is that? Um, so yeah, uh, the recipe idea is super important. The last thing I wanted to touch on is exercise. So under the exercise tab, what I recommend, and this is, you can do this on your app as well. So if you're doing this on your smartphone, um, when you do exercise, we don't log strength training on my fitness pal because it asks for every rep set and weight that you did and it's it is tedious um, if we're if we're tracking that it would be much easier to just track a pre-made workout on um, trainerize the my app for that but under this area we do want to track because we want to make sure that you're giving yourself that deficit that credit for a deficit now Here's what I recommend to everybody. Circuit training, general, okay? If you're doing any class, something that seems difficult to track um, for strength, there, that's what you put. Circuit training, type that in, the word circuit training, and you'll, you'll find, and then just record your minutes. I personally record my minutes. I change the minutes per my heart rate monitor to make sure that I'm kind of getting the right amount of calorie deficit there. Obviously, you can track cardio, other deep types of cardio simply. All right, so that's already been tracked for me for today as well. So the benefit of pre-tracking your food is that you see it already done and it makes you kind of want to stay more on track. It also means that you've done some food prep and some food planning and can make your life a little bit easier. So I challenge you to make sure you track your water, daily track your food, sit down at night, pull up your app, check it out, you know, add whatever it is. You know, I always find myself catching myself like, oh yeah, I forgot I had this. Oh, I had a handful of nuts whatever. So make sure you track it all. Okay. Have a good one.